We're here at Acura Columbus. We'd like to thank all of the veterans who have served our country in the seven branches of service. Air Force, Army, Army Corps of Engineers, Coast Guard, Marine Corps, Navy, and Special Forces. Today, Acura class is talking to Mr. James Worthington. Welcome, Mr. Worthington. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Where are you from initially? I was born in Albuquerque, New Mexico in 1938. And uh, after World War II, shortly after World War II started, my dad, uh, the family, moved around the Southwest to support the war effort. My dad had a background in both aviation and civil engineering, so we were building runways and, and uh, heavy, heavy uh, support bases for the, to support the war effort. Um, we ended up in San Diego at the end of World War II, and so that's where I grew up, in San Diego. Nice. And did you set a goal to join the Navy, or were you drafted? Well, actually, uh, in my family history, I think we've had a Worthington or some relative serve in every major conflict in the history of the United States since the Revolution. And so for me, it was uh, almost uh, uh, a progression in the family. Uh, my dad had been in the Navy in World War I and uh, living in San Diego, a Navy town, most of my friends' dads were naval officers, and a lot of them had graduated from the Naval Academy. So in about the fourth or fifth grade, I decided I wanted to go to the Naval Academy, and I got to live that dream. And after I graduated from high school in 1956, I went to the Naval Academy, where I graduated in 1960. Wow, and not many of us know from that young of an age not only what we want to do and where we're headed, but to have a goal that far out in advance. So congratulations on that Thank and you. successfully graduating from the Naval Academy. Did you have a specialty in the Navy? Well, I did. I was qualified in both surface and submarine warfare. I spent the majority of my time in the submarine force. And how many years did you serve total in the Navy? If I include my academy time, I served almost 32 years. Wow. During the, your Navy years, share with us a few of the places you were located. Well, I was stationed in San Diego uh, for a number of years, and of course this was during the Vietnam era, and deployed many times to the Western Pacific. I also served uh, two tours of duty in the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., and was uh, briefly in the Mediterranean uh, in 1966. Great. And did you decide to stay in the Navy, or how did you make that decision to make it a career? Well, you know, I think this is something that probably happens one day at a time, and then one day you wake up and you've served 30 years almost. Um, I think that uh, the thing that, that kept me going mostly were the people. I was surrounded by just absolutely incredible people everywhere I went in the Navy. Share with us something that the Navy taught you. Well, I learned discipline, I learned responsibility, and I learned accountability. And those three things have served me well the rest of my life. And they serve us whether we're in the military or some other arena. Yes, they do. Do you have a fond memory of someone specific that you respected or that mentored you? You know, that list is so long, I don't think we have time here, but I will just say as a group, when I was a young officer, I joined my first submarine in 1961, the USS Redfish, I had the good fortune to be on in the submarine force at the time with a number of remaining World War II submarine veterans. And uh, as I look back on that in my career, they were a very, very, very special group of people that taught me so much that I just, I couldn't believe it. Yes, and that would be unique because it would not just be their education, but also things that they learned during very difficult challenges. Yes, it was. What recommendation would you have for someone seeking to enter the military? Well, first off, I would have them do their homework. Uh, every branch of service offers many, many opportunities, both for officers and enlisted. And I think that uh, if you find the one that maybe offers the programs that would help you as a person, 
uh, I would seriously consider doing that, whether it's for a career or just for a tour. Thank you for that recommendation. What is one leadership lesson that you learned that you'd like to share? Well, I think it's uh, two parts on that one. I believe that uh, if you take good care of your people, they will certainly take care of you. And you never want to ask anyone that works for you to do something that you wouldn't do. And those, I'm sure, are in good stead, both in the military as well as business world, healthcare, and other arenas as well. Yes, they are. Share with us a book or two that you'd recommend. Well, I think uh, two of them come to mind. Uh, the more recent one is Admiral McRaven's book, Make Your Bed. And the other one was written, I believe, in about 1995 by Robert Timberg, a 1964 graduate of the Naval Academy who went in the Marine Corps and served in Vietnam and was severely wounded. And his book was called The Nightingale's Song, in which he describes the five Naval Academy graduate sort of uh, path in life. And uh, the, the basis for the book is that when people hear a nightingale sing, everyone hears a little something just a little bit different. And so these are the five different uh, things that these five Naval Academy graduates did. Very okay. interesting read. Yes, and thank you for those two recommendations. Mr. Worthington, again, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for sharing about your military service to our country. We appreciate you and the thousands of other veterans who have sacrificed in order for us to enjoy the freedoms that we have in the United States. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for your stellar career and the extraordinary service to our country. Acura class for Acura Columbus.